So today we are going to learn how to divide decimals using models. So our problem says 1 and 8 tenths divided by 3 tenths. So we're going to take this 1 and 8 tenths and we're going to divide it up by 3 tenths. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 1 and 8 tenths and we're going to shade it. So we have two whole right here and we're only going to shade 1 and 8 tenths of it. Let's go ahead and do that now. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but so far I've shaded in one hole. So how many of the next box do I need to shade in, boys and girls? Eight tenths of them. So here's one tenth, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so far my model shows one and eight tenths. Give me a thumbs up everybody, boys and girls, if your model also shows one and eight tenths. So now we've taken care of this one and eight tenths. I'm gonna circle it in orange because I have it shaded in orange. But now I've gotta take care of this dividing it by three tenths. So what I'm gonna do, boys and girls, is every three tenths, I'm going to circle it in blue. So I have one three tenths circled in blue. Now I'm going to do it again. Here's another three tenths. I've circled it in blue. Here's another three tenths circled in blue. But oh no, I've reached a point where I'm not quite sure what to do. What do you think I could do with this one tenth right here? Could I go ahead and take this one and then take two over here on this side? I certainly can. So I'm gonna take another three tenths. And then another three tenths. So remember when we are dividing, we're seeing how many equal groups there are. So in this case, we're finding out how many equal groups there are of three tenths there are in one and eight tenths. So let's look and see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we take one and eight tenths and we divide it by three tenths, we have six equal groups. So we're going to do another problem now. We have three and six tenths divided by three tenths. And I just want to remind you boys and girls that three and six tenths is our dividend. Go ahead and label your notes with these as well. Three tenths is our divisor. And the answer to a division problem is always called what? A quotient. I think I heard it. Okay, so what do we do with our dividend? The number that goes inside the long division sign. What do we do up here? Our first number, what do we do? We shade it, we shade it in. Good job. So I'm going to shade in my entire first box. So I've just shaded in one but I'm showing a whole number of three, so I have to shade in three boxes. So I've shaded in two boxes. I've got to shade in another complete box because I have a whole number of three. And then what does my decimal say? It's three and what? Six tenths. So I have to shade in three whole boxes and then six tenths. There's one tenths, here's two, three, 
four, five, and six. So I've shaded that in blue. Now I'm going to divide it by three tenths again. So every time I have three tenths, I'm going to circle it in red. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm running into the problem again, just like in the first problem, where I have one tenth by itself, but that's okay. We can skip to the other side and borrow from this hole. So now we're at the part where we have to count up how many circles we have. So let's do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So three and six tenths divided by three tenths is twelve. So now we have to create our own rules. I'm not just giving them to you. So steps to follow to divide decimals using models, meaning right here. What's the first thing we had to do? So we had, I love that he is using the correct terminology. We had to shade in our dividend. What is our second step? It's not always going to be by three tenths, but so circle using which number? Circle our divisor. Love it. Okay, so we're shading in our dividend. That means coloring it all in. And then we're circling our divisor. And then what are we going to do? Yes, counting, well really we can just say counting our circles, right? But I love that she just said counting our equal groups, and in parentheses I'm going to put our circles. All right, so now we're going to divide decimals using our standard algorithm. So our first problem is just written horizontally and we need to rewrite it using our long division symbol, right? So we're gonna take our first number, which is called our dividend, and we're going to write it inside 9.6 or nine and six tenths, divided by eight. So what I want you to do right off the bat, take that color pencil, and you're going to go ahead and put that decimal point where it is right now inside that long division symbol. So that way we don't forget about it. That's the number one rule is don't forget about your decimal point because it's so easy to forget. Now we're going to go ahead and get started. Can eight go into nine? Yes. Yes. How many times? One. One time. One times eight is eight. We're gonna subtract. Nine minus eight is one. Bring down our six. Can eight go into 16? Yes. How many times? Twice. Twice, look, our decimal's already been taken care of. We don't have to worry about it. Two times eight is 16. Gonna subtract and we're finished. So nine and six tenths divided by eight is one and two tenths. So I know that I can check my work to make sure I got the correct answer by doing one and two tenths 
times eight, and I should get nine and six tenths. Eight times two is 16. Eight times one is eight, plus one more is nine. I have one number behind the decimal point in my problem, which means I should have one number behind the decimal point in my answer. So all of these three numbers are involved in a fact family. 9.6, 8, and 1.2. So here I have them again right here involved in a fact family. So that's how you can always check your work. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. It is a little bit different. Our first number goes inside the long division sign. The second number goes outside. So 0 0.75. Now I want to point something out. 18 does not have a decimal point, so when it's not in sight, it's on the right. right. So here's where we have to actually start doing something with our decimal point when it's on the outside of the house, as you guys like to call it, of the long division sign. So I'm going to get my colored pencil out. We don't want to have a decimal point outside of here. It just complicates things. So we have to move our decimal point. So I'm going to move it over one, two times so that I get a whole number. However many times I move my decimal point out here, I have to move it that many times in here. So how many times did I move my decimal point out here? Twice. So I'm going to move it twice over here. One, two. There's my decimal point. I'm going to go ahead and place my decimal point up here so that I don't forget about it, just like we did over here. It just made our lives a little bit easier, right? But now I'm responsible for placing two new numbers here as placeholders, and what should those numbers be? Zeros. Zeros. Good job. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and start working the problem like I normally would. 75, can a 75 go into a one? No. Can 75 go into 18? No. Can 75 go into 180? Yes. You betcha. Well, how many times? Well, if we're not sure, we can start guessing. Let's look and see. 75, we're guessing twice. Two times five is 10. Two times seven is 14. One more is 15. So that's a pretty good guess. So let's put our 2 up there. 2 times 75 is 150. Got to subtract 0 minus 0, 0. That's an easy one. 8 minus 5 is 3. 1 minus 1 is nothing. So now I'm going to bring down that 0. So remember, our handwriting is super important for these problems because we want to keep everything in line and not forget anything. So now, how many times can 75 go into 300? Well, if we know that 75 can go into 152 times, I think 4 is a great number. So let's look at 75 times 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 2 more is 30. 4 times 75 is 3. So we are finished with our problem, and we know that 18 divided by 75 hundredths is 24. Alright, our next problem says Fiona has $1.20 with which to buy some elastic tape. The elastic tape is on sale for $0.08 cents per foot. How many feet of elastic tape can Fiona buy? So we are going to take our $1.20 and we're going to divide it by $0.08. Cents. So we're going to need to go ahead and move that decimal point over in the dividend. So we're moving it over twice, so now it's right here. So we're going to do the same thing in the divisor move it over twice so now it's right here and we're going to move it up in our quotient so eight cannot go into one can eight go into twelve 
Yes, how many times? One. One time. One times eight, eight. is eight. Let's subtract. Twelve minus eight is four. Bring down our zero. How many times can eight go into 40? Five. Five times. Five times eight is 40. We subtract and we get zero. So how many feet of elastic tape can Fiona buy with her $1.20? She can buy 15 feet. Okay, so Nancy ran a total of 35 miles to train for a race. She ran a total of two and a half miles each day. How many days did Nancy run to train for the race? Can you solve this more than one way? So the first way that my class figured to solve this is by doing 35 divided by two and a half. And then they got rid of this decimal, put it right here so that one doesn't exist anymore. And the decimal is not in sight over here, so it's on the right. And they moved it here and they put it up here on top for the quotient. So they had to put a zero placeholder so they remembered what they were working with. So 25 goes into 35 one time. One times 25 is 25. They subtracted and they got 10. Bring down the zero, 25 goes into 100. Four times, four times 25 is 100. So the answer is 14 days. So another way our class talked about being able to figure this out is you could take your two and a half miles that she's running each day and add two and a half and two and a half and two and a half and keep doing that until you get to your grand total of 35 miles and see how many times did that take you to add these two and a halfs and you would see that it actually would take you 14 times. And so that would be 14 days that she ran two and a half miles. Okay, so now it's time for us to create our own steps for solving, uh, dividing using decimals and the standard algorithm. So class, what is our first step? Most of the time we're given the problems just in a horizontal form. So we have to actually put it with our long division symbol, right? So place the numbers. Correctly. Okay, so what's step number two? You mentioned earlier something about the decimals, what should we do with those decimals? Especially if they are in the divisor. Make it look at a number. Okay. So make the divisor a whole number. And if we make the divisor a whole number move the decimal, what do we have to do then to the dividend? Make, uh, everybody trying to move the decimal or the divisor, move the dividend, you have to do the dividend. Okay. And then the one I keep saying, don't forget, what's the last thing we need to do? Once we moved it in the dividend, what do we need to do? Move it up. Move that decimal up. Good job. Now 
and don't forget about it. And then, last but not least, you just get to solve.